hello beautiful people welcome to my youtube channel and in today's video i'll be showing you how i made this full lace jumbo not less braided wig so sit right back and enjoy the video thank you and please ensure that you are subscribed to my channel and give this video a thumbs up and let's go so i'll be parting from ear to ear over the head as you can see For this video, I'll be following the Jumbo Braid pattern chart as you can see above on your screen. And after parting from ear to ear over the head, I'm going to take the midpoint of the head. While parting, I always ensure I use clips to hold the hair in place. After clipping that in place, I part from ear to ear over the nape area. For making a jumbo braided wig or a jumbo braid or any jumbo hair style at all, the pattern is one of the most important steps in achieving a perfect jumbo style. As you can see, I'm taking the midpoint of the head down to the back and I part the nape roll in a way just to make sure the back is not too big. So I'm kind of using my comb to measure it in a way and I'm gauging it so that one side is not too big. The next row, that's the last row, I'll be patting it into three parts. So we'll be having three braids at the nape area. Note that since it's a full lace braided wig, you have lace all over and so you need pins, yes. I'm using office pins for this and I use the pins to hold down the area where I'll be braiding. I don't want to hold down in a way that it squeezes my lace so I'll be using pins at every point in this video. So I'm going to be patting the front part of my lace into six equal parts, um, not really equal parts, like you just have to gauge it. You have to gauge it in a way like how it's going to look like on your head. That's why I'm using this mannequin. I just try to imagine how it will be like on a re-head and I gauge, I kind of cut out the ear area in my mind just because I know I'm not going to be cutting it out right now and I just keep all these tips in mind while I part. After parting out these six equal parts, I am going to connect them together and we are going to be connecting them together in a way that it forms three euros. I noticed that pattern like this makes the work really easy. So now that I'm done parting the wig this way, all I do is try my best as much as possible to connect the rows and I'll be using my parting comb to kind of like gauge it in a way that the pattern will look equal even though not all the parts will actually come out equal.
and now all i do is follow the jumbo pattern chart that i showed earlier on the screen to get yours you can just go online and search for it On the second row from the back, I'll be having six braids and note the pattern pattern is a bricklayer style. Notice how this pattern connected the two lines on the side that we created earlier. And at the end, it's forming a U roll. So that is just all it takes to get it. So right now, I'm just going to allow you all watch what I'm doing. And I'm only going to come back and talk only when it's necessary. On the third view row from the back, I had seven braids there, and then on the fourth view row from the back, that is the fourth view row. This part that I'm working on now, I'll be having six braids there. If you notice, the lines connecting the last view row is kind of different from the one connecting the other part so make sure you follow your chart accordingly so in total we are going to be having 22 braids and now that we are done with the pattern method sorry with the pattern style then we switch into the braiding in proper so guys, I already braided like almost all the sections, but I left about four sections to show you guys how I achieved this. That was because I was feeling really lazy to to braid and even film, so I just had to do it so the old braiding thing would get into me. And then I figured out a technique on how to know the amount of that you'll be adding i know some of you might say it's not professional but then it worked for me and i also know it will work for you as a beginner so for this method i measure about almost an inch of the braiding net 
I kind of squeeze it in a firm manner and I hold it in between my comb and I measure it in a way that it's almost an inch about 0.7 to 0.8 inch so that is what I do because when I checked on how thick a jumbo braid is I was told a jumbo braid is about 1.2 inch thick so I figured out that we are going to be adding the braiding hair of almost an inch and then the actual hair will compensate for the remaining part so now for this method I'll be splitting the desired section into six parts first off I'll split it into three equal parts and then I'll split each part into two parts making it six and then I'll be using a kind of slight division technique from everything I've been doing on this my channel for this method I'll be making the first two strands that I'll be adding much more thicker than the other strands and then I'll be making the last two strands that I'll be adding much more thinner than the other strands so I found out that when I was braiding you know the normal way to make a knotless braid you start using the smaller strand I noticed that using the smaller strand to start when you kind of want to add the last strand because that strand is big it kind of makes the the braid to be like too thick at the place where it's not needed so I figured out you know when you braid it's supposed to go from thick to thin gradually so that was why I started adopting that pattern and then if you notice I pin all along the edges before I start braiding I section the air into three equal parts and I start braiding after braiding for the four, for two times I add the four strand and if you notice I'm adding this strand in between my index finger and my thumb and I then I braid twice before adding the leave out so right now I'll be counting as I braid so you get what I'm actually doing. Divide the braid into three equal parts and then I braid one, two and then I had the extension. Place it in between my thumb and my middle finger and I braid again one and two. I add the leave out and then I add the second braid. And then I braid one, and two, I add the leave out, and now I'm going to add the third strand. I add the third strand
and then I braid. One, and two. I add the leave out and then I'm going to add the fourth strand. I'm going to be adding the fourth strand now and in case you don't know where to add the strand, the, the strand at my right side, that's where I'm going to be adding the strand. That is the strand on the right side that will be twisted to the center. You just need to practice this to actually get it. The strand at the right hand side, or oh sorry, the strand at the right side that will be twisted to the center. That is where I will add the strand. You'll notice that when I add the strand, and then I'm going to twist that particular strand to the center so it helps to lock and seal the air and it helps to just add the strand perfectly so i'm going to continue this way till i add all the strands so when i'm done adding the six strand i'm just going to braid the normal Let me add this. I always add the cis strand at the point where the air on the full list starts thinning out. That is at the point where it gets to the end of your air. That's where you add the cis strand. So guys, on to the next one. I am just going to still count again as I braid. So first off, we take out the section that we'll be needing. I measure with my tape. I divide it into six parts. One, two, I add the first strand. One, two, I add the leave out and I add the second strand. One, and two. So I detangled because it was tangling up. I had the leave out and now I had the third strand. So guys, I'm just going to continue adding this way till I get to the sixth strand. So now you know how to add your air and with this, you're good to go. while i was braiding i was trying to figure out what to do with the ends if maybe i should just braid down or maybe add beads or coil so that was why i wasn't braiding till the end so now for the remaining two braids i'm just going to braid normal so you can as well count so i'm just going to braid normal here and i'm not going to count so guys, why filming this video? It was around 3 a.m. Yes, I was filming at around 3 a.m. So please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you learned something. I definitely know that you've learned something 
you've gotten something from this video because this video is purely from my experience this is actually my first time making a jumbo knotless braid all this why i've been making knotless braids but not jumbo so this is my first time making a jumbo and i had to figure out how to make a jumbo work for me doing it the first time so if you are trying a jumbo knotless braid for the first time i would definitely recommend that you try out these techniques so guys i finally decided to just braid my hair down and this video is really kind of long because i've never filmed a 20 minute video um even a 15 minute video i'm not sure i've filmed one like this that's because i've always felt like um probably people would not want to watch a video that is really long so if you have stayed up to this time i really appreciate and some a few videos back that i posted in my channel somebody complained that my video was too fast so i decided to make this one in a pace where you can really learn so that's why this video is kind of long and if you are still watching till this time i love you and i say thank you so i finished every other thing off camera like i braided the air down off camera and then i trimmed the braid i trimmed all the flyaways around i trimmed it and i poured hot water on my braids i did that one off camera and thank you so stay to the end so you see the end result Otuta as a way of making your braids come together and look great so if you want a detailed video on how to properly dip your braids in Otuta then comment yes down below and i'll make that video and this is the end result guys it looks beautiful thank you guys and see you all in another video